Hey guys, this is Varian, and today we're going to be going through the absolute bare basics of FL Studio. I've gotten a lot of requests for this, and I can understand why, because with, with any DAW or digital audio workstation, once you open it, it can seem like a bunch of buttons, you have no idea what the fuck anything is or does, and you just want to give up right away because your brain just says, nope, see ya. And um, I'm here to remedy that. So let's just get right into it. We're going to go every single button. We're going to do every single thing. So this is probably going to be a long video is what I was going to get at. And if you're not an FL Studio user or you've been using FL Studio for a long time, feel free to ignore this video. We're going to go over some theory next time. Um, that could be more up your alley. But for those who just got FL, looking to get into FL, or maybe you're just bored and want to kill half an hour, however long this video ends up being, um, feel free to stick around. So here we go. So we're going to start with the absolute basics, and that's going to be, you know, your, your these up here, these these channels. So we have our file, and this is going to be, you know, your new project, new from template. I believe um, the default is um, basic. Yes, basic with limiter. I highly advise against that because you want to start empty. You don't want to use stock FL drums and stock FL limiter on the master. And if you don't know what that means, just hang on, we'll get there. Um, and don't mind this, this is just an experiment that I did at one time. Open, obviously, save, obvious, obvious. Save new version is awesome for when you're working on a project and you think you have an idea that, that you want to try out, but you don't want to fuck up the whole program and the whole file that you have going on. So save new version is just going to add an underscore and then a new number. So if your file name is Electro House, if you click save new version, you're going to get Electro House underscore two. That's going to be the same file, but with whatever revisions you make. And it's, it comes in handy. Um, I did it for mirrors when I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into Moombaton for the second drop. So I just saved a new version and um, it saved me the headache of you know, if it didn't work out, shit, well, I just got to undo everything I just did, and it's going to take a look. Nope. Just click this button, and you're good to go. Import. Import MIDI file. Um, that's if you want to... I mean, some of these, you have to realize this, this program's been out for a very long time. So, importing MIDI, MIDI files, like... That's if you want to reorchestrate something that's in MIDI form, but there's a way you can do it in the piano roll where it doesn't interrupt the whole entire uh, file. Export. This is where you're going to get into um, rendering it as an, as a wave or an MP3 or an OGG file. Um, zipped loop package. Um, I've never quite used that before because if I'm doing a collaboration, I'm going to do this export project data files and that's going to take every single drum hit it's going to take all the MIDI data it's going to take every single thing that is in your project and it's going to put it in one beautiful folder that you can send to your friend and if they have the exact same um, synths as you it's going to open just fine and they're going to be able to do whatever they want to their project and excuse me if my voice cracks every once in a while um, I live in Florida and we have terrible um, <clears throat> terrible allergy seasons here and I'm very susceptible to weeds and shit like that it's very annoying but um onwards so edit there's a lot of um, shortcuts I don't ever use this tab to be honest. This one I use all the time and anyone who uses FL uses this. So this is where you get your synths out. So when you download your synth, you're going to put it in C colon slash program files slash VST plugins. And you're going to go up here and you're going to click more. You're going to click this button right here, refresh. Do a fast scan, and it's going to go through. 
and it's going to find all of the things that are in your VST folder. You click this right here, and it's going to show up in this list. So from now on, if you just want to quickly open Massive, you just click Channels, Add One, Massive, and then you've got Massive right there. Let's see. View, this is just a more of a preference thing. I like it stock. Um, once again, there's shortcuts that I can teach you about how to get certain windows open. Options, this is for when you're first setting things up or <clears throat> anytime you get a new audio interface or microphone or MIDI controller. So with the MIDI controller, you can see here that I have my um, Alesis Q61. And if that didn't show up, um, I would click this button right here, Rescan MIDI Devices. And that's going to search all of your USB plugins for anything new. And you just click it, click Enable, and you're good to go. And the way you can test that is tap your MIDI uh, keyboard a few times, and you'll see this button right here, Flash. And that means it's getting signal, and that's what you want. Audio settings, this is where you play with your sound cards and sound drivers and most of the time you're going to be using um, ASCO for all. It's kind of a universal sound driver but for those of us with audio interfaces we're going to go with our you know um, audio interface driver basically. <clears throat> Buff buffer length um, Depending on your sound card, it's basically the amount of time it takes for um, signal to get processed through the driver, or at least that's the way that I perceive it. And I could be really wrong, but I noticed that the higher the buffer, for instance, if I hit a note on the keyboard, if the buffer is really high, it's going to take whole seconds for, for me to get a note sound anything back. Um, so let's see, you know, we, there's a lot of preferences here. They're all pretty much self-explanatory where to search for <clears throat> samples and stuff like that. And, um, a bunch of numbers. I know some of those numbers. Yep. <laughs> um, project info. This will tell you how much time you've spent on the track when you started it. If you want to write yourself some notes. Um, you know, it will pop up and, you know, it, you can remind yourself, okay, this is what still needs to be done with the track and et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> it's very customizable. <clears throat> I think I'm getting sick, actually. Um, let's see. Tools. Um, once again, it, it's, it's all, um shortcuts that you can do with your keyboard we're going to get into and then help is if you want to read about um, things more in depth it can really tell you about everything so here you have your volume slider and your pitch slider i wouldn't mess too much with this unless you're making some crazy glitchy music and you want to fucking wow 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 no i don't ever ever touch it this is great for fade outs you can automate this we'll go over some basic automation this will play your pattern, which is in here. We'll go over that. This will play your song, which is in this playlist right here. Play, stop, record. Here's your tempo, obviously. Um, the time in your song, you know, four seconds, eight seconds in, it's going to show here. Here's your monitor. You want to make sure you're always, um, you're not in the red or, you know, if, if you're making a banger, it's okay to kind of go into the orange because when you do... Um, what's called a pre-master, you lower the, the entire volume anyways, so you're not going to be clipping, it's called. This will be your system settings, you know, seeing how much memory is FL Studio taking up, and depending on how many synths and how long your song is, <clears throat> and how big your project file is, it's going to take up some memory. So this is um, opening and closing things, as you can see. Um, once again, more shortcuts, and you just want to leave it all open. Make sure this is all here. Compare your screen with mine. This is all you need. 
Here's some more shortcuts if you need to. You can scroll over them and it's going to show you what it does over here. So now that we've got all of this menu stuff out of the way, let's get into some actual music making. So the best metaphor I came up with this is like this. So imagine you're, you're making a cake and the, the cake is the actual song. It's the MP3, it's the WAV file. Here are your ingredients. Here is the tools that you're gonna be making. You know, you're gonna be mixing, you're gonna be whipping and whatnot. And then here is the oven, I guess you could say. I don't know how good of a metaphor this is. This might be the worst metaphor ever. But the way I can just say it is you take your files, your hits, your sounds, you put them here in this what's called a step sequencer, and then you make a pattern. You take this pattern, you put it on the playlist, and then this is what's gonna be your song. So, you know, you, you switch to song mode, you press play, and there you go. Whatever is gonna be in this pattern one, when you put it here, it's gonna play. So let's get just a very basic hit going here. Good. <laughs> Oh, here we go. I just completely skipped over a step. So let's say you've got a folder full of sounds, like say from my last video with the drum samples. Here's a really quick way to get them into FL Studio. Open FL Studio, right click where it says Packs. You're gonna go to Windows Shell Menu, which brings up the Windows folder. You're gonna click Open. And bam, there's your Windows folder with all of your um, folders of samples and sounds and whatnot. So you just drag it in here, give it a quick refresh. Dexter's done downloading. Um, give it a re quick refresh by just closing it and opening it back up again. And there you go. And then you're going to click on one of them, navigate to any sound you want, right click. And you're going to get these options. So let's go over some of them. So send to selected channel or focused plugin. This is for stuff like Harmer, which is an amazing resampling tool. So I basically with Harmer, and we'll get into that because that's awesome for dubstep and awesome for electro house and drum and bass. Um, you can feed it. You can feed this sound through a synthesizer and basically have the synthesizer reshape the sound. So don't worry about that for now. What we're concerned about is open a new channel. See? And there it is. In our step sequencer that we were talking about. And then you can right click this. You can think of it as your sample. And you've got more options. So you've got your piano roll here. Piano roll is absolutely essential. I recommend clicking the ABC button to convert to a real piano to give you more of a sense of what notes you're playing. C5 is your default sample, because if you play it up here, it's going to be really high. If you play it really here, it's going to be really low. So you want it C5. That's the actual pitch. So you can uh, design beats a couple ways. You can click two, three, four. And this is going to be one quarter note, one quarter note, one quarter note, one quarter note. This can be four beats. This is one measure. And it's going to be 16th notes. So it's going to be one, E, and, a, uh, two, E, and, a. Uh. So if you want a beat that goes bum, 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 you're going to go one, and, two, three, four. And to preview this, switch back to pattern mode, and click play. There you go. If you want to swing it, you can get some really cool vibes. It adds a triplet shuffle, so instead of da ka da ka da ka da, you're gonna get da ka da ka da ka da ka da ka da ka da. Very useful for um, anything from electro swing, French house, drum and bass, sometimes even um, more epic sounding drum uh, dubstep. Anything with the swing, da 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 da. So then we're just gonna keep sam um, stacking our uh, samples here and create a beat. And just for the sake of time, 
Let's go ahead and get a loop, which will bring me to my next thing. Thank you. <laughs> so basically here we have a beat. It's a loop. Um, I am completely in favor of loops because if, if you want to get out an idea, it, what, what difference does it make to the listener if you actually have all those accented hi-hats and whatnot? So if you want to get a quick beat out, why not use a loop? Or better yet, why, don't, why not use a loop and create your own groove, which is what we're going to do right here, just real quick. I'm going to make a whole video about this because I think that it's really cool um, to chop up samples, especially drum samples, and make sort of like a break core IDM Aphex Twin square pusher sort of sound. And we're going to be doing that with some Amen breaks. If you don't know what that means, then don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. So here's an issue. I have right clicked and gone to open a new Fruity Slicer channel. And a Fruity Slicer is going to take almost every individual hit and make it into a note on the piano roll. So we're gonna right click piano roll and there's our hits. Cool, right? Right, but watch what happens. Now why is that? That's because we only have four beats here, but this loop is actually 16. See, so it has four times four. To remedy this, and this is what I highly recommend, take this right here, beats per bar for this pattern, which is what I just said over here. Move it to eight, and you're gonna get a lot more stuff going. So instead of the same beat for four beats, it's gonna get really boring after a while. So you can do stuff like this. Add little variations, even this da -dun is going to make the ear say, okay, that, that was a new element that I'm not going to get bored of that. But if it was just, if it was just, you know, four it would be really boring. So to remedy this, this whole eight bars, but yet 16 beats, we're just going to go into piano roll and delete it all by holding right click and just painting over it. And voila. And there's our beat. So then we can take this, make sure, I like the paint tool. Um, I switch between the paint and the draw because paint, if I have a beat that I know I want for a while, I can just, done. That's like a minute right there <laughs> of beats just by dragging it out. But the pencil is for more minute stuff. So as I said, we took our ingredients, we put them in our tool, our, our step sequence here. And then we're gonna paint it here. And this is gonna be our actual song. So this is just making loops. You could think of it as making loops and melodies here and putting it all together here. <clears throat> and then you can do stuff like this, check it out. So we've got two beats, right? Let's listen to it. We're gonna switch to song mode and press play. Cool, but let's add a little variation. Instead of clicking on this plus button, which by the way makes a new pattern if you wanna go ahead and do another you know, layer or whatever, that's how you do it. That's how you make stuff in FL Studio is with patterns and waveforms and stuff. But instead of clicking this plus and adding some variation, here's a quick shortcut to get some awesome um, switch ups in your drums. So you see this little piano thing right here where this cursor is? Click it and you're gonna go to make unique. This is gonna make an automatic copy but in a new pattern. So then you can easily do stuff like this. And just in a matter of seconds, I have a completely new pattern and I can just add this at the end of my 
drum loop. You know, let's let's not do that. Nah, let's do something like this. So now we have. You see, there's a certain uh, um, phrase there. It's it's letting you know that this is over, and we're gonna get more into that with composition and theory. But my point with this is to show you that you can have an ending phrase or switch up your drums just by clicking this little piano thing and going to make unique. It's gonna make a clone of it, and it's gonna be really easy for you to get in there and make some variations. So. Then what about since we've got our drums? Well, let's get into some massive. Since we've already loaded it into C colon slash program file slash VST plugins, it's gonna be in here. We're gonna click more. We already did all that. We're gonna find massive and here it is. <laughs> so we're gonna go this plus button for a new pattern. And we're not going to use the actual step sequencer because it's going to sound like this. We don't want that. We want full control of notes, dynamics. We want the full control. And for that, we're going to use the piano roll. Let me load up a quick patch. I mean, disregard my patch names, by the way. <laughs> so here, we're going to right click, go to piano roll. And of course, basses are usually played on the lower end, so scroll down to around here. <laughs> Way too low. <laughs> that sounded like someone farting. There you go. And this is going to be your step sequencer. So let's go dun 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 dun. Basic eighth notes. Dun 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 dun. And you know, these can be dragged out, or if you want to even get crazy, go to this little magnet thing. That's that's what's snapping it to this grid, because I can click anywhere and notice how it always falls within one of these little blocks. Well, that's not always gonna be what you want. Sometimes what if you wanna get in some quick sweeps? Click this magnet, one fourth step, which means instead of You'll see. You see how the boxes got smaller? Now we can add more in between it. So instead of we can do this. So I've basically added some smaller notes to get a, a faster feel. So now we have this. which sounded like shit, but you get my point. Um, if you wanted to do a faster note run, I guess you could call it. It's called an arpeggio, and we'll go in, into that in the next theory video. You're gonna click this uh, magnet thing. This tool thing has a bunch of really cool stuff. I have a bunch of shortcuts. We'll get, I'll, I'll make a button in the description for the FL Studio pros who just want awesome variant shortcuts. Quick Quantize is great. It's going to make everything, like let's say you record yourself playing, but some of it's off time. You can hit Control Q or Quick Quantize and it's going to make everything snap. So like that. Let's fix this by the way. close enough. <laughs> ah. ah, whatever. So then we're going to take this pattern that we just made and we're going to basically drag it. And once again, this comes in great use for clicking this piano thing, making it unique and and maybe ne this time we'll go like this. Cool. 
So, and as you can see, it's not, ex it's, it's kind of like tak 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 We don't really want that. So let's do this. And that's going to be our baseline. So we're going to do this. If you want to, let's say we're, we're working on pattern four, but we want to do something with pattern three, we can click it and it immediately switches. So here's pattern three, but I want to add pattern four at the end of this one. So I click pattern four and there it is. And then you hit play. Oh, first you switch to song mode, then you hit play. And I mean, obviously it's not gonna sound good because we're just playing with loops and pretty much presets here, but the point is not the song, the point is how the song is made. Actually, let's get that back with Control Z. And if you wanna go back even more, Control Alt Z, it's similar to Photoshop. Or you can go to this current project history folder and there's all of our stuff. You can go back as far as I think However long this is, yeah, I don't feel like counting. <laughs> uh, we're taking it easy today at Varian Studios. We don't give a fuck today. We're just here to lay down some wisdom on your ass. So you're thinking, okay, patterns, super cool. Is that it? Nope, not even close. So we've got stuff like downlifters, and this is going to be stuff you put on the beginning of new ideas. And we're gonna take this, mm, maybe not that. Yes, good enough, that's very Moombaton. And we're gonna drag it here. So we have dragged this audio, completely skipped the step sequence, sir, because we don't need to sequence it. It's an audio file, it is what it is. Um, and we've just dragged it right onto our playlist and it's gonna go along um, with whatever we have here. Let's lower the volume a bit and... So there. And there's one final thing that you can do with, you know, there's one uh, more thing that you can do with the, the playlist and that's automation. So, Let's say we want to lead in, we want to fade in this loop right here. We're going to right click, and by the way, you can pretty much right click anything and automate it. So we're going to right click this volume knob since we want a volume fade in. It's going to say all of this. Link to controller basically means if you have a knob you want to link it to, like uh, a physical knob on your MIDI controller, that's how you do it. Um, but what we're going to do is create automation clip and automation does just that. It automatically does whatever you tell it to. So there's our automation. We can see that this is the volume that it's at right now. So that's the volume we want to get to. And this is how you work with automation. You right click and you create a new bullet point. And basically, so, uh, yeah, that's close enough. We're gonna take this and go down. So we are telling it, we don't have to do shit because we're telling the program automatically scale the volume up like this and then right here, measure five, it's gonna be fine. So check it out. There you go. If you want a crazier sort of sweep you take this hollowed out circle which is kind of like the um the center of the point between two points i don't know how else to describe it shit <laughs> and you're gonna go down and you see you create this vert ramp almost kind of shape and it's gonna go yep instead of gradually increasing and likewise you can make this crazy you can go either way basically and for instance, if you're automating something and you want to be crazy, why not just go all over the place and start making shapes? And it's really up to you what you want to do. Just make sure it makes some sense. Like 
that doesn't make any sense, but my my point is you can have as many bullets and shit as you want. So as far as um shortcuts are concerned, there's a few. You've got your basic, you know, control Z. You can go into the piano roll, control A, which is gonna select everything, control C, control V. Look, now I've got octaves. And that's gonna sound like shit. The point is, <laughs> I just completely um, copied that melody just by one, two, three. Control A, Control C, Control V, done. And I've got basically the same thing. Comes in handy with copying over chords, copying melodies with synths, it's fantastic. So let's say we wanna get a little bit glitchy. So we've got this pattern, let's say. Okay, we can take this, make it a little longer. We're gonna control click. We're gonna hit Alt U. And this is gonna basically chop up this MIDI note. This is um, the time multiplicator. So right now it's normal. Drag it this way, it becomes eighth notes, 16th notes. And you can get really crazy. So let's have some fun. So we can do this. And go bam. Control click, Alt U, move over. Control click, Alt U, move over. Control click, etc. You get it. And it's going to sound really fucking crazy like this. And, and that's something I'm sure you guys have heard many times in, um, you know, EDM building up to drops or like, you know, glitches and shit like that. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to think of what to, what to do next. Um, here's something cool. So you can right click. Let's get our beat back here. You can right click this space right here and you can pan notes differently. Just drag their values out like that. Um, of course, the middle would be center. Velocity, which is the default, it's more of volume. Let's see, the only other one I really use, I mean, you can get crazy with cutoff frequencies and stuff, but fine pitch is really cool. If you wanna do, Let's make a build real quick. So we've got one, two, three, four, right? Control A, Control C, Control V, move over. Control A, Control C, Control V, move over. Again, again. But this time, like that. And then from here, drag this out. Control click, Alt U, getting back to that multiplicator. And we're going to do that. And once more, this is going to be the craziest build up, so you better make the drop insane. Right now, we're on note find pitch, so if you want to make some crazy, crazy uh, build ups, here we go. So, this is the normal pitch. We're going to right click and drag up, and that's going to make everything nice and uniform. Because if you left click and dragged, you would have gotten like, you know, you can make waves and stuff, but right clicking will make everything in a straight line. I was fixing the uh, pan there, but you can see. And likewise, you can do this. When it goes down, the pitch goes down. When it goes up, the pitch goes up. Basic. And that about does it for the piano roll. Um, wow. <laughs> Um, so let's see, we've gone over all of this up here. We've gone over basic 
samples, loading them in here, even chopping them up a little bit. We'll go more into that, I said, you know, when we do some crazy glitch work. Done a little bit of automation, dragging, you know, sound effects into here. Um, and that's basically it. It's from from here, it's a matter of learning structure and theory and getting sense and like what I talked about in my drum mixing tutorial, getting good samples and making sure that you have all the finest ingredients so that your cake is fucking delicious and not noobish. So <laughs> um, we're going to quickly cut over to a completed song so you can get an idea of what it looks like. And we're back. And as you can see, this is what a full song looks like. This is actually my song, Morphine. And um, so you can see that there's just plenty of stuff going on. Here's our sound effects. Here's our, all of our patterns. I like to put automation at the bottom. Um, you know, try to be organized. For the most part, I'm really not. <laughs> So don't look at me as like a beacon of organization because I just, if I have an idea, it's, it's going to go and it's going to be sloppy, but at least it's going to sound good. Um, so another point is if you want to solo something out to listen to what it sounds like alone, it, it, you're going to click this right here. Right click this power looking button click solo and it's going to turn everything off except for whatever you have. So you can see that's the piano riff. To, you know, if you want to listen to what just this sounds like within the song, turn on the, just these three. So as you can hear, there's effects on these synths. So we're going to click on this synth. And when we click on the, all of these, you can see there's a secondary window that comes up. Oh god, I just clicked on contact. That's going to be a little bit... Oh, not so bad. You can, you're going to get this box right here. And what this box is actually matters a shit ton. And hold on, contact 5 is being slow. This is where we're going to get into channels and effects and how to get the most out of your synths. And this is where you can actually, after this video, go watch my drum mixing video. You're going to get it a little bit more. So here we have my piano riff. Let's turn these off so we can just hear the piano. And we're going to double click this e effects box. Oops. And here we have FL Reverb, FL Delay, and Parametric EQ, which I no longer use. And to get effects on your channel, you're going you're gonna to go into this window, and you're going to say, hey, piano, go to channel 15. Channel 15 is right here. This is what's going to affect the piano. And we're going to click this drop down and here are all of our effects and once again if you get new effects like i recommend fab filter pro q for equalization if you want to load that in same thing go into your vst plugins click more refresh and they're going to be there they're just going to be under effects so you're going to click this drop down menu and say you want some reverb fruity reverb 2 here are all of your settings, play with them, we'll go over effects another video. And then, um, you know, there's a little EQ thing here. I never use it, I think it's pointless because I have one here. Um, volume. The only one that I really care about is this right here. Stereo separation. I want you to use your ears for a second. So when I went all the way over to the right, it sounded like this sound was right, dead center, right here. But when I went all the way to the left, it seemed like it was coming from left and right. 
And stereo separation is an important technique that I feel that people should utilize to make their songs sound a little bit more full so that not everything is right here, but there's a full experience left and right. So mess with this knob. Don't go hard left or hard right. That's going to sound really shitty. Um, you know, maybe go like that and your panels, your pianos or synths will be a little bit wider and take up a little bit more uh, stereo space, it's called, and it'll your song will sound fuller. So with that all said, there's one final thing. Um, and please let me know if I missed anything. There's a lot to go over. I hope I've helped a little bit. Um, the, the master and um, the master channel is the channel that affects the entire song, okay? So whatever you put on here is gonna affect everything. So be careful. As I'm working, I like to use Isotope Ozone 4 as a mastering reference. I do not work with it on. I suggest you don't either. It's a plugin plugin that automatically masters your track. And yes, it's gonna sound awesome and full and crazy good, but it's gonna sound like like you like like fake. It's gonna sound like fake mastering and everyone's gonna know it because there's a certain blanket it puts over your track, let's just say. This is just a basic um frequency analyzer. I I don't work with anything on my master ever. I know some people who do, they might put a multiband compressor, which kind of is like a last, like a, um, like an, almost like an equalizer, but it affects the entire song. So just be careful if you're going to put anything on the master. I personally don't work with anything on it, unless I need to make a playable or show someone a, a track I'm working on, then I'll put on isotope ozone 4 and just just to give it a little bit more beefiness because i know that when i get my track mastered it's going to sound like that but better so yeah that about does it this is what a full song looks like it's composed of patterns it's composed of um sound effects it's composed of automation and it's in a structure that you can follow and visually see you know here's our break here's drop two there's our intro and we'll go into the structure because that's really important I feel like that's almost like the next step is but besides theory and basic melody writing and whatnot is this actual structure of songs so um, Another quick shortcut that I just remembered, if you're working within your playlist, click in your playlist. One is going to bring you to this view, which is the scrunching everything together. Two is going to bring you a little closer and three is going to bring you really close so you can start, you know, chopping up samples and, you know, just crazy shit you can get into if you zoom in all the way but we're not getting into that yet. We're basic right now. I hope you guys have learned something today. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Tell me what you want to see. Tell me what you think. Tell me that I suck. Tell me that I'm awesome. It's up to you. This is all for you guys. And um, I hope to see you next time. And until then, ta-ta.